well, I don't, I, I don't see, this is not consequentially relevant because, you know, I, the politics are more important. It's like, okay, in your perspective, to me, it's quite clear that consistently uh, educating and articulating why all of the most dogmatic elements of religion and the Bible in particular are not necessarily valid is probably a good thing for a largely religious audience to be exposed to. I, I think with respect, I think this is unfathomable cope. The idea that Jordan Peterson is acting as some kind of de-radicalizer for religious fundamentalism by publishing a bunch of videos. So um, my position is pretty straightforward. Um, I think that Jordan Peterson is a significant net positive for society for at least two main reasons. There's more, but these are the two that I would like to discuss today if possible. Uh, number one, he provides simple, practical, and effective psychological advice, and he does it in a way that is well-received by tens of millions of people uh, all over the world, actually. Um, in particular, his advice lands with young men who I believe Vosh and I would agree are the most dangerous group of people in society when they become resentful, disenfranchised, and socially isolated. Most of the violence, obviously, on the far right is perpetuated by young men, and most of the people who hijacked the Black Lives Matter uh, protests and turned them violent, for example, were also disenfranchised young men. And so if Peterson, who's a clinical psychologist, is providing clinically effective psychological advice on a mass scale to the people who need it most, then that alone, I think, puts him pretty squarely on the net positive side of the equation. Um, I am genuinely curious to hear if there's any advice that Peterson gives to anyone that Vosh disapproves of. Uh, the second main reason I think Jordan Peterson is a net positive has to do with his ideas about religion and morality. Uh, this is something that hardcore atheists take great issue with Jordan Peterson. This is something that hardcore atheists uh, take great, yes, repeated it twice. Great, great start. They think he enables fundamentalism by using religious language and being vague about it um, and being vague about whether or not he believes in God. And my claim is that Jordan Peterson is actually doing more than anyone to undermine and neutralize religious dogmatism, which is a potential exaggeration, maybe not more than anyone. So I'd like to discuss that. And so those are the two main points, and we can talk about whatever uh, Vosh wants to bring up. To be clear, the reason that I say Jordan Peterson is a net positive for society is because he does a lot of things that I think are bad, and I will be as quick to condemn as Vosh. Uh, for example, I completely disagree with him when it comes to his hesitance around allowing transgender adults to seek medical transition. He did not say that it should be illegal, but he also said he wasn't sure if it should be legal which I think is ridiculous. Any adult should be able to undergo whatever medical procedures he or she is willing to pursue, provided they have informed consent. Um, I also think you can make the case that Jordan Peterson is literally the worst Twitter user ever if you factor in wasted potential and um, just unnecessary boomer old man rage. But overall, I don't think that comes close to outweighing the good he has done on that. He's certainly not a gateway to the alt-right. Uh, he's not a religious fundamentalist. And he's not even in remotely the same conceptual universe as Andrew Tate, which I have heard some people make allusions to. Um, despite the fact that Peterson, like everyone, including myself and Vosh, and especially Andrew, has said dumb things, I think he is genuinely trying to do as much good as he possibly can. And anyone who approaches him with even a relatively open mind will come to the same conclusion. Uh, and lastly, I just want to show my cards a little bit. I am coming into this debate very biased. Um, because I have gotten a lot of uh, mental health help personally myself from watching Peterson's lectures. Um, he is in part what uh, drove me to go to therapy a couple years ago, which is a, a good decision. And there is, a, in my opinion, there's a part of me that uh, that gets resentful about you know having to defend that as a straight white male, I needed mental health help and I got it from a YouTube video. Um, lecture and then went to therapy. And while I think there is a justifiable indignance I feel when people say, for example, that Jordan Peterson is a Nazi or uh, a terrible person, the fact that I'm biased towards him does not absolve me of the responsibility to be open to legitimate critiques. And if anyone can levy a legitimate critique against Jordan Peterson, I bet it's Vosh. So uh, thank you to both of you guys. And I look forward to this. All right, thank you for that opening statement. Vosh, go ahead. The clock has restarted. You have seven minutes on the clock. You can use all of it, as little of it as you want, whatever you want to do. 
Yeah. So um, I'm glad that you fronted and preemptively addressed the he's a bad Twitter user argument. That was my that was my uh, golden bullet there. Uh, aside from that one, though, there were a couple of things. So it's it, we're, we're talking net positives here. And the problem ultimately with discussing the potential value of his psych advice is that he is primarily known for and popularized by conservative political arguments more so than self-help. He's known as a self-help guy, but he became famous because of his fallacious opposition to Bill C-16 in Canada. He's now a part of the Daily Wired network, you know. Um, the, the, what he's known for, what he talks about, um, it is at this point primarily conservative propaganda, which, you know, obviously I disagree with. When it comes to the self-help stuff, I have read some of 12 Rules for Life, not just the snippets online, but a little bit of it, because I was curious to see what it contained. And I think that for the most part, a lot of his psychological prescriptions are fairly inoffensive. I don't think the revolutionary are groundbreaking. I'm glad that some of the messaging in there is somewhat popular with people who are interested in hearing it. Um, I guess the, the issue here is this is kind of like the, um, you know, the goat fucker problem, right? Like you build a thousand bridges and you fuck one goat. And I feel like we're, we're, we're talking about um, a, a disproportionate sliver of what the man does and is responsible for. Um, if I were to evaluate him purely on his psychological credentials, you know, uh, what value there is to that, I would say that whatever good there is to the positive psychiatric advice, I think, is offset by the fact that he will invariably, by proxy, wisen these young men up to conservative politics, uh, which I think are harmful not only to the world, but also to their mental health. Um, it seems like it kind of self-compensates in that respect. I also take great issue with his emphasis on individualism as a way of distracting from systemic issues. You know, he's famously said you shouldn't critique the world unless your own house is in order. And I am okay with messaging on the subjects of uh, independence, self-reliance, uh, discipline, that's fine. I think those are good, wonderful things. Uh, but the message, like, you shouldn't attempt to engage in systemic critique unless your house is in order. Well, everyone's house isn't in order. Nobody could, nobody could beat that standard. Um, it seems like a way of dissuading people from engaging in the kind of systemic change that could actually address a lot of the issues people need people like Peterson for, you know? Uh, kind of like they make jokes about how Peterson is a surrogate dad for a lot of people who didn't have a good relationship with their father. A lot of people say that insultingly, but I don't think there's anything morally wrong or shameful about having grown up without a good father figure, right? But ultimately, I hope we could agree that the ideal would be a world in which there isn't a bunch of people uh, who feel that way, you know, addressing the underlying systemic cause there seems like a a more worthwhile goal and if he's impeding that process then you know, i don't know and finally i'll just say on religion and morality um it's i don't really take issue with his use of religious terminology when it comes to his moral denunciations i i think that we tend to see stuff like that in flowery poetry anyway so it, you know it, it seems like it's um kind of unavoidable especially with somebody as verbose and eccentric as him and i mean that sincerely uh but his system of morality is fucked. His his actual like system of deciding what is or isn't moral seems really incoherent in a way that uh, normally leans towards the validation of conservative ideals. And that's like, because the, the whole point of like religious justification of moral systems is that now you can assign a kind of supernatural or metaphysical importance to your beliefs. And if you're doing that in a really bad direction, I think you're, you're potentially doing a lot of damage. I would rather have to deal with bad secular arguments against, say, the existence of, I don't know, gay people than religious ones, because you run up against a logical wall with the religious ones. Eventually, you can't convince people past a point because it's metaphysically justified. Anyway, those are my points, and uh, I need no more time. All right, appreciate that very much. Before I open the floor up, just let me remind the audience on whoever, wherever you're watching that uh, we will be taking call-ins tonight and also send in a super chat if you have a question for the debaters as the debate is going. We will be getting uh, to all those and getting all those fielded. Last thing I did want to quickly address before I open the floor up was Vosh brought up the goat fucker analogy, which is essentially to say, and I just want to make sure I got this right, Vosh, that you can spend your entire life being a great builder, for instance, and build the greatest of all cathedrals. But if you fuck one goat, you're not known as the cathedral builder, but as the goat fucker. Is that correct? Yes. Or as the okay. um, self-help advice guy. 
Right. I always I, I, I have a, my own version of saying that one, but I, th- I think it's a funny one, I must admit. Anyway, gentlemen, the floor is open. Go ahead. Sure. Well, I think lobster fucker would be more appropriate for Jordan Peterson than goat fucker. But um, I guess, okay, it sounded like you don't. So just to be clear, you don't have any issue with any moral prescription that Jordan Peterson offers from a self-help or psychological perspective. Is that correct? Well, I don't have them all listed in front of me. I'm sure if you were to, I could find Anyone. some specific ones I disagree with. Um, I doubt I would agree with everything he says there. But the offensive stuff from him, the stuff that I really take issue with, um, is the broader political stuff. Um, he has said sure. some stuff on the self-help train that I do explicitly disagree with, like the aforementioned um, make sure your house is in order before critiquing the world kind of thing. But generally, when I critique him, it's not for the self-help stuff. Yeah, well, the point about, I think his order, yeah, his rule is, uh, what is it? Get your house in perfect order before you criticize the world, which I think is the worst rule he's written because no one's house can ever be in perfect order. So the implication is that you can't criticize the world. If I were, if I ever had the opportunity to ask him one question, I would say, why did you purposely put the word perfect? You sh- I think you should set your house in order. I think you should generally get your own life together before you go about starting to criticize and offer solutions for massive problems when you can't even solve the problems that are right in front of you in your own life. So I think that's the underlying message. Um, I guess what is, uh, I don't, you said it leads, his self-help leads to conservative values, which, okay, depending on how you define conservative, maybe. Uh, And I know that you are not a conservative. I don't think anyone would be surprised at that, but I don't, conservative does not mean bad. Um, I think you'd have to explain what, you'd have to explain what, what, uh, behavior his advice leads to and why that behavior is bad well i think a lot of it is just pure adjacency even if all of his self-help advice was perfect i mean like if 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 i disagreed with none of it which isn't really possible for anyone but let's say he met that standard if he was also a conservative commentator then simply by being popular as a self-help guy uh he would then legitimize the conservative politics through adjacency especially because self-help is such an intimate and personal topic um it's not just like uh he's really good at car repair but is also a conservative you know it's you you can't really separate self-help from one's political views because fundamentally in both cases you're talking about like prescriptive values not some bland descriptive technical thing so even if all of his self-help positions were were perfect i still think that he would be pulling people over to conservatism just by being one okay and like i said i don't the conservative and liberal both have their benefits and flaws so or conservative and progressive or however you want it left and right to be as broad as possible i, I don't i don't see that inherently as a problem and and maybe more more interestingly because you brought up the you know i brought up religion and you responded to that i don't jordan peterson for example the reason i said that jordan peterson is doing more to undermine religious dogmatism than anyone and i would say religious dogmatism is central to religious or to political conservatism um, he's an evolutionary biologist who makes the case for the evolutionary, um, uh, the uh, evolving of religion as adaptive features of evolution. Religions are belief system that belief systems that have wisdom in them, and he's taking an evolutionary perspective on that. And a religious fundamentalist, unless you define religious fundamentalist in a very strange way, would necessarily take odds at that or odds with that. So I don't see how his entire body of work being at odds with religious fundamentalism leads to anything approaching conservative values or dogmatism? Well, you, it seems like you agree with the idea that people would be moved to conservatism through his self-help stuff just because he is a conservative, because there is that adjacency. But when it comes to religious fundamentalism specifically, um, the, the fundamentalist elements of his ideology are present, the ones that I take most issue with. I wouldn't really care if he was a flat earther or a creationist or whatever. He assigns religious inherent moral weight to his denunciations, uh, the political ones, which are, of course, conservative and uh, therefore highly disagreeable. See, it's impossible to talk about his effect on the world without really evaluating the kind of stuff he has to say politically. And a lot of it is really, really bad. If it wasn't so bad, I wouldn't have so much of an issue with the self. Like what? Like give an example. 
Well, uh, I mean, the... Well, well, what is an example of him use, invoking religious metaphysics to justify a political position? Well, all, all of his moral denunciations are inherently metaphysically religious. When he says something is evil, or which he says all the time, he's not saying evil in the sense of like, um, okay. I disagree with this. He's invoking God there. He believes that morality comes from religion. And for that reason, when he's denouncing something, it must necessarily come from some kind of like innate worldview. Uh, I mean, he does the whole chaos versus order thing, but what he's doing there sure. fundamentally is like analogizing uh, the light of God versus like the, you know, the, um, the, 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 the pernicious influence of the devil. It's all just different ways of framing the same uh, binary moral system that we've seen religious types invoke as a way of justifying their politics. Okay, you, you, you said earlier, you don't have an issue with him using religious language. It's just kind of like poetic or whatnot. And you just described him using religious language and said you had an issue with it. Not so fundamentally, not sure. but my issue there right. isn't the language that he uses. It's the, uh, the metaphysical weight of what he's denouncing. When he says evil, like evil is not uh, a religious term. Plenty of people use the term evil. But when he's talking about evil, good, bad, morality in general, he's doing so from a perspective of like religiously informed moral dogmatism, um, which, which, you know, obviously it kind of sets the work that he's doing both in self-help and in politics in a very particular light. Okay. You assert that, but I don't think it's true because he, the number one, one of the main pieces of criticism of him is that he's squirrely about whether or not he's actually religious, right? And when, when someone says, do you believe in God? He doesn't say yes. He says, I act as if God exists. He says, fundamentalists are naive. He says that people who take the Bible literally are swallowing a bunch of lies. So to me, he's that's very... about a lot of stuff, though. Well, aren't we all, Bosch? Well, he's like famously squirrely about a lot of stuff. He gives non-answers all the time when he's asked direct questions. If, if if he was as if he was that squirrely, he wouldn't have millions of people listening to his lectures for three hours at a time. I don't think that's true. Also, I've listened to his lectures, and they're also quite squirrely. When he well, when he's asked I believe you direct... believe that. When he's asked direct questions, he worms around them all the time. He's he was famous for this. Like, you know, you give an interview on asked, what specifically do you believe? And you know, he he talks around it often, I think, right. in, in babble speak. Uh, but you know, sometimes uh he just clearly doesn't want to directly answer it. At at any case, though, you know, my issue here is not whether or not um he specifically believes in some fundamentalist version of God. Do you believe? When he says something is evil, good or bad, do you think mm -hmm. he's appealing to some kind of like fundamental, uh, natural moral force, something supernatural, divine, something otherworldly? Or do you think he's doing this kind of utilitarian subjectivism where he's only saying it's evil from his perspective? Uh, I'm not sure I fully understand the implications of the difference that you set up there if I agreed either way. I mean, people, like you said, people use the term evil. You said evil is not a religious term. And I think actually evil is a very religious term. All of the non-religious people, like the determinists, would say that someone who's engaging in evil is it's just a defect of the brain or something. Psychopathy is not evil if you understand it as psychopathy. So again, I don't, I don't, I don't you you say he's using religious language and he and he's invoking the metaphysical weight behind it. But again, I don't can you well so you, you need he, to provide an example of something he said invoking specifically the metaphysical. Well, when he well he talks about the metaphysical all the time when he talks about order, chaos, and the dragon and stuff. He's using sure. these, these these concepts to kind of refer to the broad moral value of certain types of um, of um, worlds. I mean, literally, like good and evil. The framing between these things. When he talks about that, what do you think he's saying? Like when he says something is evil, what do you think he means? I don't know. What's an what, what's an example of something he said is evil? Uh, I mean, I could go to his Twitter account. He uses the word pretty often, right? Um, uh, well, I believe he's also, uh, I won't say it, but he's quoted, he said some very stupid shit on Twitter, like I said. Sure, well, let's say we'll give uh, an example. transgender yeah. children, uh, uh, children taking hormone blockers. So he says, so he says that's evil. What does he mean when he says that? Uh, I think what he means about when he's talking about trans children, he's specifically referring to gender reassignment surgery and double mastectomies being performed on like 13 year olds by physicians who have a financial incentive. And when, when he says that's evil, um, I, I think that's, to me, that's self-evident why that's evil. Just well, like we're, we're it's self-evident why someone abusing a child 
for profit is evil. Well, we're loading a lot here. So a surgeon is a job. So if they're doing the job, mm -hmm. they're doing it with a profit motive. Um, but he's he has not specifically said, like you said himself, he is denouncing the right for adults to pursue uh, gender affirming surgery. No, which means he said that... he wasn't sure whether or not it should be illegal. Okay, well, even you took time to call out that behavior of his. So we agree right. then- that And he specify what he said. A bugbear with what he, um, with with the the issue of access to trans, but let's say specifically like uh, a sixteen year, year olds getting their breasts cut off. Okay, so let's say like a sixteen year old uh, trans chick is getting hormone blockers, which is the thing that can happen. You can do that; it's possible. Um, in such a case, when he says this is evil, uh, and he has said stuff like that is evil, not just thirteen year old double mastectomy, whatever, but he's applied the term there as well. I don't think that's true. Not about sixteen year olds, because he's a fan of Ken Zucker's work, and Ken Zucker does prescribe puberty blockers for sixteen year olds. So what he says is evil is thirteen year olds getting their breasts removed. So um, no, I don't agree. It's the sixteen year olds on puberty blockers. Didn't didn't he go after Elliot Page, who was in his um twenties, saying that it was maybe morally wrong for a public figure to be trans because it could like corrupt the values of people broadly no he said he would have left elliot page alone had she not like made it a big deal and flaunted it and he his argument was He's a celebrity why how would many not? how many people about it. how many people did elliot page convince to pursue gender surgery than they otherwise might not have because of her which you know it's like again i I think that was a rage tweet, but the, the let's stick with the argument of 13 year olds. We know for a fact, it's not disputed. I could pull up the studies right now from the Journal of the American Medical Association that 13 year olds are having their breasts cut off, double mastectomies, and then followed up with six months to two years later, and it's considered a success. So Jordan Peterson says that's evil. To me, that's self-evident. I don't think I've actually ever heard a story of a 13-year-old getting a double mastectomy. I'm sure you could find some cases, but we would I, be talking maybe like single digits for that age. That'd be that's really far down. Why well, what, at that on, age? Whether, how, why would you because, even get a double mastectomy when you're still going to experience breast growth? That's, that's kind of weird. That's there's a number of weird things going on. But hold on, to say it's a small first off, it, it may be a small number, but to say it's a small number doesn't eliminate the moral weight or severity of it well, then, why, then why are we talking about like such an incredibly small minority of like why why can't we just say like well so this is what that's the response that conservatives say when why are we talking about police shooting unarmed black men when only about 20 unarmed black men are killed per year because we're talking about a broader it, systemic issue exactly that's why we're talking about the, the 13 year old double mastectomy Okay, but what we're really trying to talk about is what Jordan Peterson means when he says evil so you say it's self-evidently right. evil that that happens what do you mean when you say evil I, I mean the same thing when I say someone abusing a child is evil. I don't feel like I need to explain myself in that regard. I, well, I'm asking you to explain yourself. What do you mean by evil? What, but what does that term mean to you? Uh, yes, we can see that, Andrew. Um, I don't know. When I say the Nazis um, gassing Jews in the Holocaust was evil, do you honest? Are you are you being serious right now? In that you're, you want me to explain that as if it's not obvious? I want you to tell me what you mean when you say evil. What does the word evil mean? What system are you referring to when you say something is evil? What What's the... It's the, very, very bad. Weight. It should be avoided at all costs. Okay. That's what but I like, mean by evil. Right, but why? Like, what... So you say something is evil, so it's bad. Okay, right, but like, like, why? By what system? By what system? Like, how do you know if something is evil? How do I know that when Hitler rounded up the Jews and put them in gas chambers that that was evil? I, I don't know. There's a, there's a, I get a funny feeling, I guess, when I uh, hear that and I think this sounds pretty evil to me. D do, you, do you understand this is kind of a weird question? No, it's, it's actually essential. Without grounding where your morality comes from, it's almost impossible to talk about it. Okay. Well, we, we can have the conversation about moral realism, moral anti-realism, and maybe come back to this. But that's, I mean, this is kind of critical, right? When it comes what, to- Do you Jordan believe in Peterson, evil? What do you mean when you, do, you, do you agree that, for example, let's just take an obvious example we both agree on, I would assume. Mm -hmm. You you do believe that the, not like what the Nazis did was evil, correct? Of course. Okay. And what is your standard for defining well, I'm a, evil? 
I'm a moral anti-realist, so I mm -hmm. arbitrarily chose a set of axioms that I want to maximize, which I do through a normative ethical framework that I call utilitarianism, and not just I, a bunch of people do. Uh, and then through utilitarianism, I try to determine whether or not I think something is good or bad based on the effects that it has. And evil is basically just a strong word for bad in this case. I don't think that okay. evil has a distinct meaning. I just sure. think it means that's bad how I use very. It. Sure. That, okay. That's how I'm using it. Very, very bad. Right. But so are you a moral anti-realist I as mean, well? I don't know. Certainly Peterson's been accused of being a moral anti -realist. Anyone who doesn't- Oh, that's, that's definitely not true. Jordan Peterson has that's a very- That's absolutely true. He's accused of being postmodern by all the religious people. Does that mean he is? It's not like religious types are that philosophically educated. Well, I think some of them. I agree that some of them aren't, but I think some of them are pretty well educated. Um, uh, Look, I, I'm kind of confused. I'm kind of confused. This was this is the whole this is the, this is the conversation we're having. You say uh -huh. your problem with Jordan Peterson, you know, he 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 invokes metaphysical religious presuppositions or something like that, which I say he doesn't do. And I don't, and you haven't given an example of how that's the case. He just, he uses evil in, as far as I know, the way that you're using it very, very bad. And it's, it's, and what I don't understand is but for, why is it very, very bad? I don't, why is because it? Because his assessment for whether or not something is good or bad has nothing to do with mine. Do you understand that you're like, we have to, we, when we come into a conversation, we have to come, we have to have some level of agreement on the underlying rules that we're operating by, the presuppositions. And for example, the Nazis are bad, and we'll use that as the example. Like, I don't, I, f I feel like I don't need to explain myself. I'll, I'll use it in the same way. Very, very bad. W whatever you said, utilitarian. I believe in maximizing good. Jordan, what's Jordan Peterson's mean motto? Uh, minimize unnecessary suffering. Jordan Peterson's a strict utilitarian in that regard, then. So if what he's, so if we're he's operating in the same framework. Then it seems kind of odd that the stuff he says is good or bad all the time has very little to do with what's actually harmful. I mean, in you want opinion. to you want to denounce his Twitter behavior broadly, and I, I mean, he does mm -hmm. come across as kind of a, a crank sometimes on it. But like the the most prominent times that he's gotten in trouble on Twitter recently, where he randomly called a fat woman like ugly and said that authoritarian mm -hmm. beauty standards wouldn't convince him otherwise. Yes, I believe um, he said not beautiful, which was a mistake, and uh, I, I literally made a video saying actually i think right. she's, uh, and he beautiful. continued with it with the videos he made and then he made a video yep. with his daughter um He's and perfect that's and right there out. was the the elliot page thing where he mm -hmm. seems to adopt the position that it's morally wrong for a celebrity to be trans because other people might be trans because of it no he's saying it's wrong to celebrate it's flaunt it propagate it out to 13 year old children who so as, who, wait who don't could very don't well be it. influenced wait, wait, wait. by that don't don't overload it Elliot sure. Page just took a picture. So Elliot Page is trans and just like took mm -hmm. a selfie. Like, sure. Okay. So, and his opinion, and I, I don't think he should have tweeted that about Elliot Page, but I'm I'm explaining his thought process for going back to what's evil or not. His his point is there is appears to be a social uh, epidemic of a lot of children in particular converting or going undergoing gender therapy when it's not correct for them. The Tavistock Clinic, which is the biggest clinic in the biggest gender assignment clinic uh, in the UK was shut down. It's being sued by a thousand families. Scandinavia, I, I could, I have to double check on Scandinavia banning puberty blockers, but they've certainly recommended a wait and see approach, which is the opposite of the affirmative care model. There's over the next year- and they're two, wrong, yes. Yeah, well, over the next, we'll see. Over the next year or two, there's going to be numerous stories, and I've talked to people already who've been in this position, of people who thought they were transgender, underwent uh, a medical transition, and then regretted it. And it's because, well, the, you know, the regret rate is 1%. That's what the studies say. If that was the case, you wouldn't have a 1,000 families suing the Tavistock Clinic. Yeah, you can. So the, there's current, the point, the point and, we, and, and to be fair, I'm I'm asserting this, and you're asserting the opposite. We'd have to actually look at the studies. Oh, and, we can you know, look we at can't... the studies directly. Something like ninety-eight percent of people don't regret their uh, gender-related surgery and hormone treatments, which is a level of acceptance several times higher than that of hip surgery. That's uh, the overwhelming majority of people who detransition as well 
detransition due to uh, running out of money or lack of social support. I think it's something like 70% in total. So of the, so we have like 98% are not, are, are satisfied with their medical so-and-so. And then of the 2% remaining, a majority of those only detransitioned because of a lack of the resources or social care they needed to keep at it, um, leaving a very small minority of people lower than that of the regret rates of almost anything else. Um, there's a reason why medical standards trend towards the affirmative care model. It's because it's the one with the most supportive data. The UK closed down that clinic, those clinics, and the lawsuits are happening not because of medical research, but because of politics. That happened after a prolonged multi-year campaign of conservatives uh, lying about the effectiveness of gender therapy and gender treatments. Um, and what follows the, you said Scandinavian, it's one of the Scandinavian countries. I don't remember which one. They did move to more of a wait and see model for puberty blockers. And the reason for that was in part the citation of the UK clinic shutting down. So all this suggests to me that this is politics, or Sweden, Sweden it is. Um, it's politics at play, not medicine. So okay. it seems to me like we were at kind of like an ethical- Can I cast. respond to that? Well, I just want to say what sure. Jordan Peterson is talking about we were talking about the Nazis earlier, which I think well, is very apropos. Hold on, before Jordan we move Peterson, on, I want to address. Let hang on, Paul. Let it, Paul. Let him finish. Oh, I just want to okay. finish, and then I'll be done. Really quick. Okay. Jordan Peterson was saying that Elliot Page was a degenerate. The Nazi theory of degeneracy is one in which pervasive social harm and corruption, usually through liberal progressivism, is spread from person to person like a disease and has to be cut off. Uh, at the root and burned out in order to eradicate entirely. That is what Jordan Peterson was saying, that Elliot was spreading degeneracy by promoting those uh, elements of himself. Okay, there's a couple things I want to say. First off, he never said degenerate. That never showed up in his vocabulary referring never to Elliot Never said Page. it, no. Okay, so that was wrong. And everything else you said regarding the studies, I'm aware that that's the perspective that people have. That's 100% wrong. Those studies are as valid as the Lisa Littman study that suggests rapid onset gender dysphoria is a social contagion. So you can assert everything you said about it's the regret rate is 1%, the social transition rate, or the people, the, re, the, re, the, the reason that people cite when they detransition is because of social regret. That is all 100% wrong. And- Can you prove that? In, this is, so this is an open challenge to you or anyone watching. I am more than happy to pull up the study. We can't do it in this debate because we didn't prepare for this ahead of time. We'll pull up the studies on screen, go through every single section of the study. And I, and I am utterly confident, I could be wrong, but I am utterly confident that not a single person can defend any of the studies that are suggesting that that imp, that imply any of the statistics that you just put forward. So we have to we have to have a separate discussion for that because it's just a he said, he said, unless we pull up the studies. And I'll be we honest, we can bring I them up right those... now. A lot of these studies have thousands or even tens of thousands of respondents, whereas the study that you refer to, the one that talks about rapid onset dysphoria or whatever else, yep, uh, that was just pulling a bunch of transphobic moms. That's what. Ev okay, here's what I'll, I'll wrap this because and Andrew, we we can't we. Let's have, whether it's you or whoever, let's have this discussion where we send the studies in advance and pull up ahead of time. Then wait, just tell me said. why they're illegitimate then. We, if, if we don't want to go by- For the it, same reasons, the least, I, I went through the meta-analysis that uh, I think Rose Rist put together some time ago, 50 Cornell studies. Every single one of them was as flawed as the Lisa Littman study okay. for the same uh, reason. Sample the Lisa, bias. So wait, the Lisa Littman study was flawed because all they did was ask the parents who they found from transphobic online forums and developed a new social theory based on what they heard complete hearsay yes. from those people. Whereas the studies mm -hmm. I'm referring to are meta-analyses of- uh, Individual studies of that did the same thing. Wait, no, no, no. We're talking about clinics reporting satisfaction rates from their clients. That are flawed studies. You wait, gave an example wait, why Lisa Littman's study is flawed because it, I, it, it went I to- I just uh, explained it to you. So you can't ask the moms of a social group that you want to target, especially if you're recruiting them from big online sites. Sure. But what and I'm equally, talking about equally, hold on, let me respond to that exact point. Equally, if you're conducting a study that says the surgery was successful, you cannot have a sample selection bias of only the pro-trans websites. And that's exactly what they, every wait, single study- Wait, 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 they're not, yes. wait. These weren't pulled from pro-trans websites. They were. They were no, 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 they weren't. 
They were from the patients at clinics. They were reports of satisfaction from the actual medical clinics. Of those that infected. stayed in the clinic, many of them left and were never reported on. Hold on. Let me just wait, say so, this because no, this is a, this is a rabbit hole. That's wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, no, no, no. I can't let you get okay, away with you this. Okay? You can finish this point. The fact that you're comparing. So the Lisa Littman study, its own thing. We're talking about the same standard of analysis and medical accreditation that we would use for any kind of surgery or medical care satisfaction process. That's You wrong. have a certain number of people at a clinic and they all get a certain treatment and they report their satisfaction afterwards. And then you add those numbers together and you get results. We use that system for every kind of medical treatment. And now somehow for this specific issue, it's an illegitimate way of ascertaining the regret rates well, based on what evidence? What's the issue with it? So like so, I said, so hang on, so hang on, so hang on. We need to tie this in somehow to the topic at hand, which is Jordan Peterson. And that's, that's not where we're at. We've kind of gotten off into we the weeds. We need to move on from this. this so I'm not, I'm not moving into save anybody, not save anybody, but we have gone way off into the weeds here. So boss, did you have a way to tie that into Jordan Peterson or was that like kind of a standalone point or what did you have in mind with that? Well, if we're, if we're talking about morality, what we're talking about ultimately is like my, my thesis here is that Jordan Peterson's uh, interpersonal advice is massively outweighed by the harm of his political positions. And if he's spreading essentially Nazi doctrine when it comes to uh, transgender people and their medical care, uh, and that people are believing that doctrine because they, they trust him on the 12 rules of life or whatever, you know, I think that's a pretty strong case for overall harm. Yeah, I mean, okay. that that's that's a valid point, Paul. So <laughs> sure. It, is it a valid point? Um, the idea that he's spreading so just to put a pin in that, again, the next time we cross paths, Vosh, we can exchange studies ahead of time. And instead of the audience going, I don't know if I should believe Paul or I don't know if I should believe Vosh, we'll pull up the studies on screen and walk through them. Otherwise, it's a he said, she said. But to your point about did, what is it? He's spreading Nazi, what, propaganda or something? Does it, So I believe you have said that Jordan Peterson is a Nazi, literally. Is that correct? Um, I think that he enables Nazi ideology. I don't think he's interpersonally a Nazi. I think he's a fascist for sure, though. I see. You think he's a fascist? Yeah. He's pretty consistent in this regard, um, especially yeah, with his daily ahead. wire Explain videos. What, what's an example of uh, something that he has put forward that is a fascist idea? Um, well, I would say the the theory of social degeneracy is a pretty straightforward one to begin with. Um, but What's... if we were to go beyond that point, uh, I would say that his um, constant talk of cultural Marxism, another Nazi theory, uh, and his obsession with the decay of the West, the decline of the Western civilization, um, these are very common fascist framings for modern political uh, revival movements. Um, obviously, his general support of the conservative movement and working for Daily Wire, a fascist organization, doesn't help. I mean, at this point, he essentially works with the fascist press. So that seems pretty, pretty direct, um, as it were. But no, it's I don't I don't think that he is like a, a like a, a, you know, armband and he seek Heil Nazi. That's good. That's so good. On. That would be uh, that would be a bad look for me if he was. I won't lie. Yeah, so, I don't think make, he's there that yet. would make this debate much harder on my end. Okay. He'll get there. Well, I'm glad we're there. Yeah, potentially. Okay. Well, look, I'm I'm aware that this is something you say, so I, I will I'll say this. I think I'm the fool for even entertaining this idea that Jordan Peterson is a fascist, but because it's so it's like okay, it's like Hitler was a fascist. So Jordan Peterson is you're using the same word to describe Hitler as Jordan Peterson. On the one hand, it's just it's just it's a bit, I think. But I, I'll give you space to explain what is your criteria for labeling someone a fascist well whether I mean, whether JP or not and they... hitler were both nationalists no well everyone who loves their country is a nationalist well then i guess sometimes these terms have wide applicability outside of the most extreme examples yeah, but, right and that's that's I believe this is called equivocation if i remember my nerd debate bro logic shit where you use a word that you know doesn't mean what everyone else uses. Well, but you then get Paul, to then it. Paul, then Paul, you need to get to the point. No, no, I, no, I, I think is he's fine to say this. I mean it in the sense that you imagine. You, I, mean it. I mean, he is a fascist. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not dancing around it or beating around the bush with uh, okay. maybe you know, oh, so, he's some light version. Okay. So I think that what, is his ideology. 
Okay. So give, can you give me, we, we, you talked about social degeneracy that leads into the trans issues, which we have to discuss at a separate time using studies. There's, there's certainly other reasons you would call him a fascist. Can you give me one example of an idea he has put forward? This is something you should do, or I believe this, that is fascistic. Mm -hmm. um, well, the main one would be the cultural Marxism bit. Uh, cultural Marxism is just a retooled version of cultural Bolshevism. It's the same conspiracy theory. The idea that the West, in, in the old case, Germany, of course, but now the West, um, is being destroyed via elite groups of liberal academics who hate America and often hate white people um, and are using Some their power do, and influence to ahead. corrupt us from within. Sure. Uh, Frankfurt School stuff, that kind of business. Oh, he mm -hmm. did recently agree with Putin. Um, Putin said that uh, the invasion of Ukraine was uh, justifiable because it was a way of preventing the spread of liberal degeneracy into Russia. And uh, I believe JP said, and I quote, like, and who could blame him? Because he was talking broadly about like crazy lefties on Twitter or whatever. And it's like, ah, well, who could blame him doing an invasion to prevent the, right. So stuff like that. Okay. Um, I think that's complete bullshit that he said, who can blame Putin for invading Ukraine? Um, he might have used that phrase in some other like, you know, Putin, 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 like many people are uh, worried about the direction of the West. And for example, all of the weird, uh, the, the decline of Western civilization, which is like, I don't see any difference between saying Western civilization is declining and pointing out we're in late stage capitalism. So to me, it's like to say that one's a conspiracy, but one's a progressive point doesn't make any sense. Well, the question will be, why is Western civilization declining? Because late stage capitalist theory sure. is just an analysis of the economic conditions we're living under. Well, let's let's talk about the cultural Marxism thing, because that's fun and uh, silly, in my opinion. So, OK, you said he's you said cultural Marxism. Jordan Peterson has used the term cultural Marxism. He really uses the term postmodern neo-Marxism a bit more, which we can talk about postmodernism because you, you yourself are a postmodernist, correct? Uh, uh, probably it's yeah, yeah, it's complicated, but yeah, I, I'm highly sympathetic to their their influences. That sounds like something a postmodernist would say, but that's fair. Um, so, is, so the implication is Jordan Peterson. First off, I disagree that he's using culture he, when Jordan Peterson talks about cultural Marxism. He's not referencing a Nazi conspiracy. He's referring to the impact of Marxism on culture, which is exactly what it sounds like. Which and, is what the Nazis were talking about. Okay, well, the Nazis were not big fans of, well, Israel didn't exist yet, but the Nazis were not a big fan of uh, Jewish people. And it's like, okay, if uh, if Ilhan Omar uh, pushes for BDS, um, boycott, divest, sanction Israel, does that make her a Nazi because she agreed with Nazis? Oh, I don't think there's anything wrong with protesting Israel, but if she was an anti-Semite, I would say that's definitely a parallel between her and the Nazis. Yeah, but the the evidence that you're citing for Jordan Peterson being an anti-Semite is that he's repeating the talking points of Nazis. And I could just as easily say anyone I'm who only criticizes Israel is repeating the talking points of Nazis. I'm only which saying is true. it's the same conspiracy theory. The idea that Frankfurt School academic intellectual communists uh -huh. um, infiltrated American culture and are destroying it from within. That's what I want to know. Why do people believe the West is in decline? I'm not entirely sure if I understand that. Our GDP is skyrocketing compared to that of China's, India's, and well, broadly the rest of the world's. We have the strongest military. I, I, I don't know what people mean when they say the West is in decline. For a Marxist, that's a remarkably capitalist defense of the growth of the West, saying that the GDP has gone up. I believe mental life expectancy is going down. Mental health issues are increasing rapidly. People are uh, deleting themselves to be TOS friendly at increasing rates. There's more and more polarization. The, the idea that what 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 is what are people referring to when the civilization has decline? To to me, that's an indication of how um, you might not be paying attention as close as you could because I well, think it's I, I do. That there are a lot of I mean, issues. I'm being well, kind of facetious here. I know that when people talk about the West being in decline, they're usually talking about um, cultural Marxism, immigration, uh, Muslims, and leftism. I see a lot of West is in decline stuff whenever um, you know you see like. Uh, drag queens, for example, because the West is in decline because they're wearing uh, frilly clothing, for example. I hear the West is in decline in response to a lot of stuff. Um, if the West was okay. truly in decline over mental health issues, I'm not entirely sure why conservatives are so opposed to the concept of SSRIs uh, or therapy broadly. Um, it seems well, like- Certainly Jordan Peterson is the opposite of that. He specifically says that if you've got mental health issues, you should give SSRIs a try. 
Uh, he's sure. a clinical in, therapist himself. In that respect, he might be better than the average conservative milieu, but the fear mongering a slightly about the West kind being of Nazi, but not a, hmm? a slightly kind Nazi, but not an all the way bad one. Oh, he is, I stand by the fascist accusation. Again, he talks about cultural Marxism on and on and on and on and on. Okay, so uh, are it, people who support Jordan Peterson, does that make them fascist by implication? No, I mean, I think it means they like a fascist, but unfortunately in the current political climate, it seems pretty difficult to avoid that if you're even mildly tolerant of like center-leaning media, because there's a lot of people there who are kind of like edging on the side of things. Okay. Okay, the, re the reason I'm pondering for a moment is because you understand what you're saying, what you've been saying the past few minutes is very different from what you say in many of your videos. Would you agree? Well, I call him a fascist in those videos too. Well, you say, well, you say, uh, you say a, a variety of things about like conservatives in general, like that they're, a, what is it? They're, they're no different from the KKK. Conservatives today are no different from the KKK in the, eight, in the, who were, I think the quote was frothing at the mouth. Um, keeping black people away from integrated schools. You said that. And now it seems like you are not standing by those beliefs and taking it back and hiding your power level a bit. No, I still stand with whatever it was I said back there. I don't think there's much of an ideological difference between a modern American conservative and a member of the Ku Klux Klan. Um, it's just a continuation of existing ideals. You know, it's not exactly a... Um, like a, a conspiracy that there was like this huge wave of Ku Klux Klan support that was kind of backed by conservative politicians at the time. Those politicians lasted a long time too. And a lot of their ideological forebears right up until the civil rights movement, you know, they were pretty open and friendly with a lot of really obviously anti-black stuff. And then civil rights movement happens, the act gets passed and uh, can't say the N word anymore. Um, but a lot of the same people stayed in office and a lot of their children and friends ran and won in their offices later. And it makes you wonder just how much stuff they kept bottled up. At any rate, the ideology is still remarkably similar. So Xenophobia my... and nativism are the big driving forces of modern conservatism. And I think mm -hmm. Jordan Peterson plays into that uh, uh, quite a lot as well, uh, largely so... with the cultural Marxism bit. Okay, the reason I'm not being as um, warm and welcoming as I could otherwise be is what you said, the implication of what you said is that, for example, my conservative friends and family members are no different than the Ku Klux Klan. Do you understand why that limits the degree to which I can take a lot of the other things you say seriously, and why many people in general don't take as much as you, as much as you say seriously as they might otherwise? Well, I'm not trying to hide uh, in audacity. I think it's a fairly straightforward assessment of where modern American conservatism is. I mean, do you think that families of the Ku Klux Klan back 120 years ago uh, didn't talk with each other as normal people? Everybody thinks they're normal, right? But obviously with retrospect- But it's just us with conservative friends and family members who are literally as bad as the Ku Klux Klan today. That's what you're saying. The Ku Klux Klan think? who burned down the, ho the homes of black people with black children in them mm -hmm. and hung them. You're saying my friends and family members, people watching this who have friends and uh, family members who are conservative, they're just as bad. That's what you're saying. Well, nowadays you would instead cheer on a racist policing system that's used to disproportionately inflict violence against black people. So you've sort of delegated the the violence to a, a system, a very expensive one at that. Sheesh, at least the you know taxes didn't pay for the KKK. But um, you know, fundamentally, I think that a, a, the parallels remain there. They're not the same in terms of like the exact yeah. extent of the harm they commit interpersonally, obviously. I'm talking about ideological synchronicity. But yeah, sure. no, I mean, the modern American conservative, right, this is a template of fascism. If I believe, for example, that Ron DeSantis and Trump are both fascists, which I do, and the GOP is a fascist org, why would I not believe then that conservatives in America today are themselves, I mean, it, it, at least fascist sympathizers, right? Like, you know, not individually, every single one of them is like an ideological fascist, but they're, at, at the mm -hmm. very least, they're part of the movement. It's not meant as yeah. an insult. Obviously, I disagree with it. but It's I think not it's meant as an insult? Fascist. Hey, you and you and your friends and family who might have voted for Trump, they're as bad as the KKK. You don't you don't understand why people would take that as an insult? Ideologically descendant of the KKK. You can take it oh. as an insult, but I think we have oh, to, I see. It's we much have to reach better. that middle ground before we can have any reason. You're not a Ku Klux Klan member who hates black people. You're just an ideological descendant of a Ku Klux Klan member who hates black people. I think that's uh I think that is uh, a, a condescending defense of an indefensible 
position. Uh, well, it's it's not meant. I'm not meant to be Weasley when I say that. I just genuinely think that is the case, right? I mean, like we would we would have to acknowledge, for example, that um, the conservative parties in modern day Germany would have had ideological roots in Nazis, hold right? On, hold on. The conservative party, the the, the current um, leader of uh, Italy, for example, literally like a, a direct lineage of the supporters of Mussolini. So I think it would be fair then to say the people who voted for her would be ideologically in yes, line with Yes, I, I understand the the formula of the argument you're making. You said you genuinely believe in what you're saying. So you're saying, do you have any friends? Do you hang out with anyone who is a fascist or a excuse me, a conservative, although it's the same word? Do you have any friends who are? Yeah, I'll leave it open because. Uh, there are a couple of online people I talk to friendly who okay. are, uh, so, I would consider such, yes. Okay, so if you believe that conservatives are literally Ku Klux Klan members, excuse me, literally ideological descendants, We'll keep it a keep it tight. Um, why are you hanging out with them? Well, what what does that say about you and your character? I mean, some people might disagree. There are people on the left who get mad at me. By the way, they got mad at me for being friends with Shu. Uh, still do. They're mad at me for 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 all sorts of things. Um, uh, it's but their opinions aren't really what matters here, right? Um, I don't think it morally compromises me to have a friendly conversation with a person of any ideological disposition. I've never been the kind of person who thought that every interaction you have with somebody you disagree with has to be like a shouting match or anything. But I, you, I feel like this isn't, this is genuinely not directed as an insult. Okay. So whatever you may think. That. Okay. What, okay. Here, out of curiosity, what do you think of communism? Of the ideology? What do you think um, of its lineage, of its effect? There are some things I like better than communism. Some things. Yeah, like ice cream. Okay, gotcha. But you would probably put it below the 50-50 par, right? Probably. That's a fair statement. So whatever associations you may have with communism, you could fairly draw that line to me for my ideology and its precedent, you know? Um, whatever use you'd think you would get out of this discussion for it, you know, I, if we were talking about something like that specifically. But my goal here is not, oh, haha, ha, now that I have denounced you as the fascist, we can move on, we can leave, you are bad now. My goal is, you know, these are the ideological roots of where you're coming from. This is like the, the, the ground. So what is your goal? Is, is your goal, I'm just a genuine question. And, and let me just say, I have a lot of thoughts based on the last 15, 20 minutes of our conversation. Um, I have said, specifically, that I do not think that you are a uniquely bad person um, or you're not capable of any unique level of harm that anyone else is, right? You've had cameras on, you have a huge audience. So naturally the impact of everything you say is gonna be worse, but there's nothing unique per se about you. In fact, that's central to Jordan Peterson's whole um, body of work is that each of us have the capacity to be a Nazi camp guard. And had we been in Weimar, Germany, uh, it's likely that most of us would. And so you have to understand that capacity for harm. And so I'm actually, the reason I'm, I sympathize with what you just said about, you know, just because some, you disagree with someone doesn't mean you need to have a screaming match with them or whatnot. You can still be friends with them. And I, I, I I'm, to the degree that I'm able, I'm, I, I'm trying to engage with you honestly for the same reason. But I guess it just, it confuses me because if you are genuinely interested in, let's say, combating fascism, then it seems like you would recognize that calling people, calling people's friends and family KKK members or equivalent to the KKK, equivalent to people who lynched black people, that that would impede your goal of trying to get to a common understanding. Is that not, is that not reasonable? Is that not a reasonable critique that one could levy against you? Well, the problem is, I think the opposite has actually been the case. The aversion to calling, a, you know, um, a spade a spade has actually been a huge detriment to American politics. We've basically been seeing like the resurgence of sure. a modern American fascist movement being built up like brick by brick. And this entire time we've been thinking, you know, oh, it's it's hyperbolic to call it this. It's over the top. You know, you're God lawing the entire conversation. It's It's worthless. You're being silly. You're ostracizing people. And right now, um, Ron DeSantis... Uh, is threatening felony charges for teachers who have qu degenerate material in their Taught books, by which any theory, mention right. of sexuality or gender, uh, providing government-backed whitelists for stuff they're allowed to show. And it's like, oh, that's literally just like a Nazi policy. Like, explicitly, straightforwardly, like, you will be held to account if you spread degeneracy to the school children. 
Um, sure, which Jordan this. Peterson has condemned the attempts of Ron DeSantis to censor critical race theory. So that would put him squarely on the opposite end of the fascist spectrum. But he does nonetheless attack in this case everything that the left has to do with the, the gender, sexuality, trans people, okay. and the like. I did find the, the quote, by the way, um, in, yeah, when go he ahead. was talking about Putin in Ukraine and um, yeah. Putin's reasoning for um, uh, invading uh, Ukraine, he did literally describe the U.S. ideology of like uh, gender ideology, gender uh -huh. norms as degenerate. He actually said the word, which I didn't remember, but sure. He didn't say that. He didn't say Elliot Page was degenerate. He didn't call out that name, but he said that the broader movement towards cutting off the breasts of 13 year olds is degenerate. That's fair. no, I agree he, with he, that, by the way. No, no, no. He said, wasn't clear. he said U.S. culture wars were degenerate. That's and then he to. said that it was irresponsible of Elliot Page to exist in public while showcasing that what he is calling degeneracy in this video. So this is directly like Nazi ideology. He's even using the term. We don't have to do any inference on his intentions. It's pretty straightforward. Um, again, I think if you accept that there is a concerning trend of children having medical procedures performed on them. There is. And that, again separate debate and we'll pull up the studies and we'll see who's right rather than who is who sounds more confident when they assert it hold on let's go back to what you were saying about uh you, you need to call a spade a spade okay here is why i think what you are doing is very detrimental to the conversation in general it's called syndrome syndrome and i coined it so for those people watching you maybe uh hearken back to the um incredibles movie in which the um, primary villain named syndrome there's a scene in which he has imprisoned the Incredibles and he says to them, he reveals his master plan. He says, um, when I'm old, uh, I will sell all my inventions and the, the inventions that made me super. And then uh, I will give them to the world. And when everyone's super, no one will be. And that's syndrome syndrome. When you use a word so broadly that it means everything and nothing at the same time, you actually allow the people who identify with that word to get a free pass. It's like what the Republicans do with communism. Oh, you want to uh, raise the minimum wage? That's communism, that's socialism. Or it's what the uh, uh, left does with racism. Oh, there's a disparity of any kind, that's racism. You know, I can't, I can't even think of the thousands of examples. I know you've made videos about all the weird racist shit that the left does. And, you know, they assume everything is possible, is, is racist. It's the same point. And you using the word fascist, which again, this is one of those examples of everyone watching this who doesn't already agree with you or know what you're saying. They hear fascist and they think Adolf Hitler. And you're saying, well, no, I mean fascist in this very unique way. And I want to call a spade a spade. And it's like, okay, all you're doing is allowing the real fascists. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, uh, my screen went out. All you're doing is allowing the real fascists to get away basically scot-free because, oh, well, they're calling everyone a fascist now, so we can actually bring our real fascist ideology into the mix. I think Nick Fuentes is precisely as influential as he is because people have been so imprecise with calling out their opponents as being fascist or just being wrong. And Nick Fuentes now we're in the not situation unique. that we're in. Nick Fuentes is not unique in his ideology. Even some of his cohorts right. He's were a saying, real fascist. well, no. Potentially. Even some of his cohorts were saying one of the reasons why he's so obsessed with saying racial slurs and screaming about Jews is because he has to distinguish himself from somebody who is otherwise identical to him, Charlie Kirk. See, this oh. is the issue with what you're saying. You the only bring person I can't stand you more than Nick indignation, is but in Joe. reality, the ideology. Do you say fascism is some unique thing? No. No, fascism I said the way you one... use it is unique. No, I don't. I use it by its standardized definitions, or at least yes. one of them, because uh, Jordan all political Peterson ideologies is a have. Yes. See, all you offer is indignation. Liberalism is the dominant ideology of this planet, but it is followed mm -hmm. very closely and second by fascism. If you take a look all over the world, China, India, Turkmenistan, the idea of ultranatalist, xenophobic, bigoted, ultranationalist, this isn't an uncommon. None of those ideology. apply to Jordan Peterson, and he explicitly calls all of those out. Ultranationalist, Jordan terms. Peterson. Jor so this is the problem with Jordan Peterson. It's one of the reasons why talking about his ideology is frustrating. He terminologically. Sure. He distinguishes himself not only from fascism, but conservatism. And then you take a look at his videos in the Daily Wire, and he's screeching about how the West is going to fall because of degeneracy 
of sexuality and gender inflicted by liberals. And it's like, oh, this isn't at all distinct from actual neo-Nazi so, propaganda. Okay, so by, you're a consequentialist, correct? You evaluate people by the consequences of their actions. Is that sure. fair to say? Yes. Okay. So if someone supports Jordan Peterson, does that not make them an, you just told me, you just, you just laid out as clear as day from your perspective, why Jordan Peterson is a fascist, D even a Nazi. Cause he's not just a fascist. He's repeating Nazi conspiracy. Uh, well, I don't theories. think he's a Nazi. I think but, he's repeating, but, but he Nazi called theory. Elliot Page a degenerate. Why doesn't that make him a Nazi? Because I don't think that being a Nazi is just employing Nazis theories on degeneracy. I think that you would need to fill a higher criteria than that. Good answer. Okay. But he is a fascist, correct? Oh yeah, he cleanly meets that criteria. Right, cleanly. So why? So if I, knowing this, for example, give money to Jordan Peterson by buying his products, like his self-authoring suite, am I not a fascist by supporting someone who is explicitly a fascist, knowing that he is a fascist? No, I mean, I pay taxes to the US government. That doesn't necessarily make me yeah, a supporter. Okay, that's not your no. choice. But if you uh, donated to a, if you donated to a, someone who was a, what a, a communist party would that not pretty clearly make you a at least a communist sympathizer it'd be indicative i think that there are reasons why people like jordan peterson All right we're getting closer there are reasons why people like jordan peterson that aren't his fascism however these days especially and it would be less so the case like five years ago but these days especially he is primarily associated with conservatism first and foremost it's his videos his tweets the material he produces is that of pushing fascist conservative politics um, okay. and, and, and to that end, you know, I think it's getting more and more difficult to appreciate him for, for reasons other than that. It's possible though. I don't mean to completely denounce it. There are a lot of people I see sometimes in his YouTube comment sections under some of his videos who come across as, um, politically unmotivated, but largely okay people. I mean, you can never really tell from a YouTube comment, but it's totally possible. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. Um, Okay. Well, uh, I mean, again, what, what, con what confuses me in this debate is how confidently you assert, you said, I only bring indignation to the conversation. It seems like you're doing the same thing where you say he's, he's panicking about the decline of the West. He's repeating Nazi conspiracy theories. He's supporting fascist ideology. He's xenophobic, whatever. He, you gave all of these reasons uh, indignantly and, and made it obvious. And then I ask, well, okay, if I say knowing all that, or, or at least having heard you said that, if I continue to support Jordan Peterson, how am I not also a fascist sympathizer? Well, you may, well, might be. I mean, it seems how is, to me how like is you anyone, are- How is anyone who supports Jordan Peterson, let's say financially, not also a fascist sympathizer if they know all the things that you said? Because they might not sympathize with his fascist views. They might just like him for other reasons. If we're assessing people, and yet by the despite that, is it you're saying it's oh, so? If you so, if someone is a literal Nazi ideologue or close to a fascist ideologue, excuse mm -hmm. me, I don't want to be imprecise with my words. If uh, if someone is a fascist ideologue, and I know that, and I choose to buy their products, there's nothing wrong with that from a consequentialist perspective, according no, to you. I I do think there's something wrong with it. Uh, what you're talking about right now is like the ethics of boycotting, and I don't really care that much about boycotting. I buy Coca-Cola products, even though they've funded death squads in Latin America. I mean, I've bought mm -hmm. Nestle products, even though they've done horrible shit in West Africa. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not big on the boycotting stuff. I mean, I guess it's good to avoid it if you can, but it's not, um, and I don't, I don't know if it's good like line to run down. Um, but there are lots of people who support him for his political ideology. I mean, that would probably be like the majority of people who support him at this point. I mean, if I go like to the, uh, the, the recent Daily Wire videos, it's, it's, he's not exactly unpopular in that side of things, right? Sure. Well, there's all kinds of people who are not exactly unpopular that on either side. It doesn't say anything about anything they're saying. Well, you, I mean, we, we agree, if nothing else, that Jordan Peterson is a conservative. That's pretty hard to avoid. Um, uh, really? I mean, he talked, really? well, for example, let me, okay. Jordan Peterson specifically says, just as an example, this is a very simple, straightforward issue. Jordan Peterson explicitly says being gay is not a sin. And, and the fundamentalists who claim that and try to convert people are wrong. If he was a fascist, why would he not agree with that? Um, why so would he not consider that degeneracy? 
So this is one of the problems with Peterson directly. So I'm going to leave aside obvious explanations like he's lying for optics, which I don't actually think is the case here. Um, well, Why would you say that was an obvious explanation then? Because it's always possible. I can't prove it's not the case. And conservatives lie all the time. But I don't actually think that's what's happening here. I we think... all lie all the time. But yeah, go ahead. Well, there are liars all across the, the board. But here on the Daily Wire, unfortunately, it seems to be a prerequisite for employment. Um, I think in his case, there's a kind of incoherence. And I actually see this decently often. Have you ever heard of the phrase, um, hate the sin, love the sinner? I have, yes. So it, it's a conservative religious mantra, right? Well, don't hate gay people, okay? The, the, mm -hmm. the, the act of sodomy is wrong, but gay people themselves are fine. The problem is people who say love the sinner, hate the sin or whatever, don't actually usually love the sinner. In fact, I remember, and you can look at this back to the 1980s where it was really common, that, that that phrase, that attitude was often used as a way of scapegoating. It was like, a, oh, I'm not hateful towards you, just towards sodomy. Now get in the camp. You know, it was like a, it was like a, hey, all of our bigoted behavior here is purely a product of our ideological bias against an action, not you as a person. And I think in a lot of cases, this is what we see here. So Jordan Peterson will call gender ideology degenerate, talk about how it's irresponsible for trans people to exist in public because it's corrupting the youth, and mm -hmm. say that he sympathizes with Vladimir Putin for trying to keep Western degeneracy out, mm -hmm. with Putin, of course, being the leader who presided over a number of anti-gay laws in, um, in Russia. But, yeah. And then he'll say, well, I don't think homosexuality is a sin. My answer to this is, of course, is I don't fucking buy it. Being a part of the Daily Wire, which is full of people who, literally full, like all of them, want to get rid of uh, gay mm -hmm. marriage, and they're standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, uh, mm -hmm. supporting conservative candidacies and uh, their general ideological bent. Whatever he says here doesn't matter to me. It's the effect of his actions. Didn't you just say that you are friends with conservatives because you don't believe in, what, just shouting at people? What? Hold on, there's a couple things you said. First off, just as a point, Jordan Peterson joining the Daily Wire. I was not a fan of that, but if he's the one to sneak and Trojan horse evolutionary theory into the Daily Wire audience, I'm fine with that. Evaluating on the consequences of his actions, I want as many religious people to buy into the theory of evolution as possible so they stop believing in ideas that I would regard as nonsense. So from a consequentialist point of view, he's got that point. Well, but he hasn't made videos on evolution. He's certainly made videos on transgender people though. 98% of every single thing he says is a reference back to evolutionary theory. So I don't know what you're talking about there. Wait, do you think 98% of his videos are on evolutionary theory? Or do you think he makes videos? Every single statement that he makes talking about moral injunctions and why and everything he says is conditioned and constantly referred back to from the framework of evolutionary theory, indisputably. Yeah, I, I don't think that's I don't to what to whatever extent this makes the Daily Wire audience more amicable to evolutionary theory is largely irrelevant to me. Um, I'm more concerned with what he was brought on board to actually do. It's a political advocacy network, after all. It's not like sure. a general content creation network. They bring well, him on board and he talks about conservative stuff. That's what he's been doing. He hasn't been arguing with opinion. his contemporaries on evolutionary theory. He hasn't been challenging their preconceptions on religious doctrine. He's been going there and he's been. I mean, he's been towing the party line, right? That's what he's paid to do. I think I'll save it for the q and I'm tempted, tempted to pull up a clip. And I can just say it, but if you don't believe me, um, I can pull up the clip. Uh, Jordan Peterson says the book of Revelations in the Bible is literally a psychedelic trip. And that all the person did who wrote that, the book of Revelations, is take a psychedelic and write down what he experienced. That is literal apostasy and blasphemy in the church saying that the book of revelations, the Bible was a acid or a mushroom trip. And so this, and that's, that's tip of the spear in terms of the scientific, um, battering that he pushes against religious dogmatism of, oh, well, the earth was created in six days. Yeah. That would, you have to throw out the entire theory of evolution and you say, well, I don't, I don't see, this is not consequentially relevant because you know, I, the politics are more important. It's like, okay, in your perspective, to me, it's quite clear that consistently, uh, educating and articulating why all of the most dogmatic elements of religion and the Bible in particular are not necessarily valid is probably a good thing for a largely religious audience to be exposed to. I, I think with respect, I think this is unfathomable cope. 
The idea that <laughs> Jordan Peterson is acting as some kind of de-radicalizer for religious fundamentalism by publishing a bunch of videos where he um, argues about like degeneracy and trans issues and stuff. Like if, if that's an angle of his work that you think is appreciable relative to his contemporaries, that's fine. But we're talking about like sometimes like Adolf Hitler went down to the bridge under like underneath the interstate and he would like pick up trash, you know? Yeah, that's, I'm, a I'm, that's a, that's a, that's a I, laughable I, comparison. That's I don't, uh, the, even if he was a full evangelist for evolutionary theory, and I mean, to which the point he where is he was arguing with, no, I have never seen him argue this with a conservative. Okay. So, and what does that prove? You just haven't, you clearly haven't watched enough Jordan Peterson then, because he's literally telling fundamentalists, you are swallowing a bunch of lies. Have and, you seen him say that? I can pull three clips it, of him back to back. It doesn't, fundamentalists. it doesn't not, seem not that extreme, to but. prevent him from mingling with Christian nationalists. So it seems right. like the well, political maybe, outcome of this behavior is kind of irrelevant to me. Or maybe his continued prolonged discussions with those people would draw them out of their religious dogmatism but i don't but they're still fascists why would i okay do you do, would it would it I be forgot that I was prefer... still a you could just pull just i mean fascists. It, well no, no no i mean like really think about what you're saying what you're saying is okay when he advocates fascist political policies he does so in a way that employs a doctrine of analysis that suggests an adherence to evolutionary theory and if we just let him advocate for fascism for a few more years he will eventually make the people he works with semi-secular fascists rather than Christian nationalist fascism. He's not advocating for fascism at all. Again, you are using this word in a way that, oh, well, he's, a, he, he's... <laughs> again, we have to have the discussion about like degener degeneracy is a strong word. And it's like, okay. He probably shouldn't use it. Only I should be using it. Maybe, maybe that's fair. Um, let me make a point because you said something and I know we're, what 50 minutes till uh till break um don't don't mind that just mind what's what's going on in front of you you said and this is a this is a this is an example of why i think you are completely underestimate you have a overly reductive view of things that that clouds your judgment and is why you have such contradictory perspectives that jordan peterson is this super fascist but even if you support him well you're not you're you're not really a fascist and all these different things. You might. You be. said, yeah, everyone might be everything. Um, you said that religious people, you said love the sin or hate the sin. Religious people use their, that as a uh, rationalization for actually hating the sinner, right? They say that, but they actually want to go after the, the, like the person who's gay. Is that more or less what you said? Yes. Okay. I think that's completely wrong. I think most of the homophobic people um, who would, for example, send their child to gay conversion camp, which is just as egregious of a sin as sending a child to uh, get to undergo gender um, surgery, given the wildly insufficient data supporting either of those two treatments. Um, the we reason people, the, the reason people, transition. separate debate. We can have that, and I want to have that, whether it's you or whoever's watching. That's an open challenge. We'll do the debates. You said um, they're doing it so they can just uh, hate the sinner. The whole reason that I think many families are homophobic, for example, are because they genuinely believe that if their child is gay, that child will go to hell. And if you genuinely believe that your child will go to hell, if you really love that child, then you would do everything in your power to prevent that. And I think that's exactly the same mentality that parents who transition their child, who believe, look, I genuinely believe that a 13 year old child is in a position to determine their gender. There's many medical associations that push that, you push that, and it's not unreasonable why people would believe that. But that does not absolve them of the responsibility and the consequence of claiming that or, or sending their child to gay conversion therapy or sending their child to go get gender uh, transition, that still is ultimately going to harm the child. And But to say that it's not coming from a position of love, which is ironic, and you say, well, how can that be a position of love? It's because many children have suffered at the hands of their parents when their parents thought they were doing the best thing for their child. And for you to say, 
it's just a rationalization for them to exercise their homophobia is an unbelievably reductive take. And I think it just illustrates the degree to which you are severely <laughs> overcomplicating or wildly simplifying all of these issues. And it's again, why it's hard to take anything you say seriously when you say, well, Jordan Peterson's repeating Nazi conspiracy theories. It's like, okay, so is he a Nazi? He interviewed Benjamin Netanyahu and basically rolled over and let Netanyahu spew whatever he wanted to. I'm not a fan of Benjamin Netanyahu, but to say, well, he he basically shills for Israel, but he also is a Nazi. It's like, okay. But I didn't say he was a Nazi. I said he's a fascist. Netanyahu, by the way, is also a giant fascist. Um, it's funny that you would make that comparison because Netanyahu is an excellent example of how- um, I could actually broadly... agree with that more so than Jordan. Hold on. You said Jordan Peterson repeats Nazi conspiracy points. Hmm? Conspiracy uh, So does Netanyahu, by the way. PF, you said a lot. Let Bosch respond. Okay. I just want to say, so does Netanyahu. Netanyahu is a Holocaust revisionist, which is absolutely a neo-Nazi thing. I don't think Netanyahu is a Nazi, but he's made the argument that actually Adolf Hitler wasn't going to genocide the Jews. The only people who gave him the advice to do so were the Arabs. See, modern Israelis don't like Arabs that much. Obviously, that's their main geopolitical enemy. So he wanted to transfer the hatred and the misery of being victimized by the Holocaust onto a new ethnic group. Um, that weaponization of the Holocaust, not to mention, you know, revising its history, that's the kind of thing a Nazi would do. Um, Netanyahu, leader of Israel, just did it for his own reasons. And that would be an example of a fascist who employs Nazi techniques without himself being a fascist. Um, the a uh, Nazi. Oh, sorry, without, without being a Nazi, yes, thank Nazi. you. Um, yeah, I don't think that Jordan Peterson's a Nazi, but the stuff that he says is absolutely fascist. The Nazis were fascist, far from the only ones. Fascism is remarkably common world around. We had a nice resurgence of liberal democracy sometime after World War II and maybe more broadly since the fall of the Soviet Union. But honest to God, there is plenty of room in the world for fascist ideology to spread. I don't think it's exceptional to say that so-and-so figure is this or that, or that a group of people is motivated by ideologies which, uh, you know, directly inform the stuff they do and say now. People say all the time, I'm not racist, but. I'm not sexist, but. Nobody wants to look like the bigot, but a lot of people are anyway. I mean, God almighty, if you could go back and look at some of the media coming out around the time of Dr. Martin Luther King's uh, marches, you know, on Washington, you would see so many people, listen, I'm not a racist, I'm not against equality. However, and they would contrive the most inexplicable arguments yeah, to justify yeah. how they happen to agree with the, the mm -hmm. racists on everything, but not because they're racist. Right. And I think we see this all the time. And JP, my squirrely friend, is particularly good at not directly attaching himself to any label or ideology, even though his actual messaging seems to be pretty consistent. Can you be a fascist and also a good person? um in other than in the in your sense. world in the way that you are using the word can you be a fascist and a good person yeah because i have a utilitarian framework if a person is yeah. ideologically fascist but never acts on it and only acts on other impulses that are good i would have to say that is a good person if i was using a um uh what is the term the uh, ethical um uh, there's another another framework where you try to analyze people based on their internal worlds their um, deontological the answer no 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 it's a, it's a vir virtue ethics virtue ethics that's right um i believe it, that's a subset of deontology I, I it might it might be yeah i i've never studied up in it but i, it, I might care more Pull. about what's going on in their head um that being said most people with fascist beliefs would would act on those beliefs of course it would inform okay. their behavior if there is any takeaway from this debate it is syndrome syndrome most people when they use the word fascist mean not a good person like Nazi. Most people use Nazi and fascist interchangeably. Now you've added some nuance, which is fair. And based, if I a priori accepted your definition of fascism, sure, we could agree. But what you are doing is you use a word that you know is not, is not in any way used by uh, the average person to then say, well, Jordan Peterson's a fascist, but you know, you don't say, well, you can be a good person and be a fascist, which I think is nonsense to the at least in my definition of fascism, which is interesting. So the fact that you have a definition of fascism that is more digestible and has more room for being a good person, I would argue actually, like I said, 
facilitates the rise of fascism because I think it's a terrible thing that should be limited and you should have a word to describe a specific phenomenon that needs to be called out. But you but don't do that. But it isn't a specific phenomenon. It's a broad cluster of social and political influences. Not to it's most kind of, people. Well, no, most not, to people... The, not to the audience that you have, the size of your audience. You know full well that most people, when you say Jordan Peterson's a fascist, you are invoking a, a idea that Jordan Peterson is like Hitler, who was also a fascist. I explain my ideology to my audience. The problem is most people, if we want to talk about the normal person, what is the average person's definition of capitalism? The average person is retarded. They couldn't give a consistent definition of capitalism, of mercantilism, of liberalism. If you ask the average person what their definition of liberal was or of socialist or communist, why should we defer to their definition? The definition for fascism that I use is from Umberto Eco's 14 points, a kind of broad guide for the social tendencies that indicate fascism because it's an incoherent ideology. It's natural naturally incoherent. It's one of its components. It seeks to disguise itself as other ideologies, to borrow and break and recompose. Um, the Nazis did this. The Nazis fronted themselves as a pro-worker, pro-poverty party. Seriously. Some of the most, uh, the, the demographics they were most popular with back in Weimar Germany were unemployed um, German workers following the Great Depression, which is nonsensical because in reality, they massively privatized and didn't give a shit about the poor after they took power. Um, but they lied as, I mean, fascists lie, right? You know, I mean, big, big whoop on that one. Um, I'm not looking to be incoherent. I really don't care about the definition of this though. I'm really more concerned with the individual moral rightness and wrongness of the positions that Jordan Peterson has. They are fascist. I certainly think they are. But even if we took away the label and we're just like, okay, in a vacuum, what do these things do? What do they mean? Well, I would still say they're very harmful. Fascism in this respect is more of um, a, a reference or a shorthand but you can i mean ideally you should always be able to ethically justify something uh without using a label you should always be able to go back to basics um i don't know i don't think the average person is retarded nor do i think that they're equivalent to a kkk member if they happen to be conservative i just it's very difficult for me to have to engage at the level that you are certainly capable of engaging on when you make these claims in the same sentence the average person's retarded most conservatives are all conservatives are liter are absolutely the same as kkk members ideological just, there's an impediment of... that's a that's not what you said that's not what you said do you want me to do you want me to read the quote that you said about conservatives um sure you're free to but i've clarified in this conversation they're ideologically descended well, that... of you have clarified in this conversation. So now that you've clarified, let me ask you this. Will you going forward, now that you've clarified, assuming you recognize your mistake, will you label, will you go after this conversation, will you continue to make videos where you say things like conservatives are the same as the KKK? Um, well, I might say stuff like this is just like the KKK when I'm making like a broader analogy. My goal there isn't to be literal, right? I mean, I'm, I'm obviously trying to draw comparisons with specific aspects of their ideology. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can make a direct comparison between some of the actions of the KKK terrorist group and like modern day, um, like rural nimbyism or yep. like the... Um, in, in unwillingness to um, to provide space in cities and accommodate black or brown people. There's a, there's a line there. that the, the line doesn't mean that they're like one-to-one, -one, but the line definitely exists, right? I mean, if, if you, add, like, for example, you take a look at what the KKK believed in, right? They were the terrorist group, sure. But the stuff they did, you know, lots of people in the South back then agreed with it. I mean, that was kind of the point. They weren't like outlaws and hated by all the white folk down there in the South. I mean, a lot of people, that was the whole point of uh, Birth of a Nation, right? Like they were sympathized with, they were thought of as heroes. They kept uh, black control from spreading too far. And if you think, okay, if Birth of a Nation, a movie just idealizing the Ku Klux Klan can be popular at the beginning of the 20th century, and some of those folks then went on to live to the 1950s, 60s, 70s after loving that movie when they were a kid. Where does the line stop? You know, like where does that connection break? And I think you can make a clear case that a lot of the reasons why folks liked that were the same they opposed Martin Luther King, the same reason they opposed forced busing, same reason they opposed a lot of stuff. And if you run it up, we're right here in modern American politics. It doesn't mean that it's just like clan members thought out of ice, but like there's a line there. 
And you got to pay attention to it too. People, they have short memories. You let these ideologies die off. What just happened in Germany? Those um, Reichsburger people tried to institute a new such and such because they wanted to build a fourth Reich. They weren't even sympathetic to the Nazis. They were sympathetic to the goddamn monarchy before the Nazis. So it's like, fuck. And you take a look at those analyses from the German government of how many of their police and military have far right militias where they want to reestablish the fourth, fourth Reich, often like the forests and stuff. I'm just saying. You can't believe these ideologies die off. They're always there and they're always waiting. And you have I've to got wait. one point, Andrew. This is the last point. No, no, everything make it in your make it in your closing statement. So I rambled like crazy. I'll, I'll can have I get 30, get 30 seconds. You get 30, 30 seconds. seconds. 30 seconds. Everything you just said sounded so very reasonable. And this is what you said 10 months ago. There are no good conservatives. If you have conservative friends and family, they are part of the problem. They are exactly the same as the KKK white nationalist who ran terror campaigns and who threw rocks at black people. Everything you just said, which was so very well articulated and very, you know, oh, well, this makes sense, is – I don't know which Wash I'm talking to. I'm to am I talking to the one who tried to seem reasonable there or the one who said the, the conservatives are the same as the KKK? This is my problem in this conversation. All right, gentlemen, we're going to move into closing statements. Is Paul open first? I'm going to let him close last. Vosh, I'm going to let you close first. You have seven minutes on the clock. Go ahead. Won't need all of it. I rambled for a good bit there. Uh, that was absolutely hyperbole. I defend the underlying intent. Um, I'm always willing to clarify if asked. I think that my channel, for the most part, has been pretty consistent in indicating a non-essentialist attitude towards people's ideologies. I mean, I created the channel based on the idea that there were a lot of like alt writers out there who just needed to be yelled at a little bit, and they might be pulled over to being a good person. And if I believe that, then fundamentally, I have to believe in the idea of people changing. Um, I mean, the if, if, if the worst interpretation of my message there is a kind of like essentialist denunciation of um, modern conservatives or the idea they actually are the Ku Klux Klan, like they're all out there burning house and shit. Obviously, I don't believe that. Um, but I do believe we have to be kind of a, a watchdog um, for the ideological, uh, you know, development, even if it goes underground for a bit. I mean, we're seeing things rise back up right now. Is that uh, that the end of your closing, Bosch? Yes, yes, that's all I need. Okay, okay. Paul, go ahead. You have seven minutes on the clock. Um, let's see. Um, I did not prepare a closing statement because I did not know how this conversation was going to go. And admittedly, there was a wide range of uh, ways it could have gone. Um, here is why I wanted to have this conversation. Um, I said earlier, Jordan Peterson is a net positive um, because even though he's said bad stuff, overall, he does good. Um, Vosh, I have said on multiple occasions, um, I think you actually do a lot of good um, in, in spite of or alongside of all the dumb stuff you say that I think was made clear in this debate. For example, um, you, I know your audience... You give a lot of like actually good practical advice to a lot of um i think like teenagers and whatnot who you know are socially awkward or struggle or whatnot and when people say oh well vosh is just this or vosh is just that you know we should just ignore him and not speak to him it's like okay i think that's stupid because if you were as bad as people make you out to be or rather if you were defined by your worst dumbest statements um, then you would be a terrible person. But I've seen you say a lot of reasonable, good things. And uh, the part of the reason I had, I wanted to have this conversation, I don't know I I exactly, but, you know, is to at least make that clear and to see if we could have kind of a um, an agreement. But again, the difficulty of that is when you, I've watched your videos and I obviously have seen the most hyperbolic stuff you say. And whether or not that's, actually reflective of what you believe or not it's kind of like well the only hope that i think you have is if you um stop living this contradiction where you say these one things and then you come into these debates which i thought was extremely you know aside from you saying things i strongly disagreed with let's say i mean this is like a respectful conversation i think it could actually be productive you know we, we can we didn't get to go into the merits of postmodernism 
and you know moral moral anti-realism versus you know objective realism in a non you know um i guess emotionally charged way probably in part my issue but I, I, like there are a lot of bad things going on in the world and i do think that we need to turn the temperature down and have a conversation and to your point you should still call a spade a spade and that's why i'm not being you know the nicest person i could otherwise be but i also think it's important to actually like acknowledge you are more than capable of reason you're more than capable of doing the right thing and i would hope to elicit that from you rather than do the easy thing which is oh well vosh is just in his own bubble and he you know he can go f himself and it's like time will tell whether or not i'm the fool or i'm right so but I really do appreciate this conversation. So thank you. Is, is that uh, is that the end of your closing there? That's the end of my closing statement. Andrew. Okay. Gentlemen, I appreciate very much you guys coming on this fine evening. We have a bunch of callers to get to.